can't beat a nice cup of tea of an afternoon. And my transparent teapot here, which I got sent by Joanna, and thank you very much, Joanna. It has been getting some really good service. Look at that. What I like about it is, as you swish it around, the central thing moves as well. So it sort of gets all the flavor out of the tea leaves. Right, so let's have a look at those herbs that I had sent. So thanks very much to Jenny for sending me this box. And let's have a look at what we've got then, so I can work out what I'm going to grow in the garden. So we've got cress. I haven't grown cress since the school days. Obviously that'll be done in the kitchen. Maybe a little sprinkle on top of some scrambled egg of a morning. So we've got basil, mint. So I've already got mint, so what I might do is I might pass that on to somebody else who might want a bit of mint. Rosemary, gotta love a bit of rosemary. Spinach. Oh, is spinach a herb, is it? Uh, lettuce, thyme, parsley, rocket, coriander, dill and chives. So, thank you very much to Jenny for sending the seeds through. It's good that even though it's late afternoon, the sun has sort of come out, apparently this weekend. It's going to be nice weather and I think quite a lot of us will be hoping for a bit of sunshine. So let's have a look at this letter that I got sent. Obviously I'm not going to read out what it says because it's quite personal stuff. But uh, many thanks to Barry Taylor for the seeds, the wildflower seeds. What I might do is I might divide this up and put some in the garden and put some on the mountain side. Maybe when I go on the mountain, I'll just throw a few and see if they'll come up there. And we've got a beautiful card here from Joanna. Thank you very much for that, Joanna. Oh, again, I'm not going to read what it says inside because that's the private correspondence. Now, I had a friend of mine in London, Jim, said he saw something and he said, you'll be interested in this. So he sent the link to me and I sent off and I bought this item for the garden. And he said he called it a rusty rusty. So look at that. So it sort of, it goes on the side or you can screw the thing down on top of a wall. I didn't want to get the big one just in case it, it did scare the cats. So that's a little gift to myself. And also, do you know when I fell the other day and my stick bent? Well, I sent off for a new one the next day and it turned up. And then I thought, this is perfect because even though this is slightly bent, it is still workable. And I thought, I've got two. I can now go skiing. So that is very handy indeed. Oh, let's have a little drop of this. Oh, beautiful. Now, I've had this and I haven't seen it yet. I said to uh, Stephen who has sent it and this has come all the way from Vancouver. Now, Stephen's been watching the channel for years and years. And again, he sent a private note, but the upshot is that he, when Rusty died, he also had a cat who is called Misty. And sadly, Misty died as well a few weeks after Rusty. He had had him t until the age of 18 years old, which like Rusty is quite a big age. So he said he wanted to send me a gift because he said, you know, having a cat for 18 years, it leaves a, quite, a, quite a big hole. So he has set up a business and it says, I'm starting my own small business that will involve helping people to memorialize their pets and 
as they've always been a, uh, an important part of people's lives. With this sentiment, I'm sending you a small memorial of Rusty. So let's have a look at what this is. He said, be careful with it. Oh look, two plastic things. It's heavy. No. Oh. Look at that. It's a piece of slate with Rusty's picture put on it. It's quite a hefty bit of slate. Look at the thickness on that. That is gorgeous, that is. Thank you very much, Stephen. I will put this. I'm having something delivered next week from the Antiques Fair. And this will take pride of place inside. Look at that. Beautiful. So Stephen said, said he's starting up his own business. So what I'll do is I'll find out some more information and I'll put a link in the description below. So if you want to go off and I, I suppose he could do pictures of kids as well. If you wanted to have some pictures of your family on there. I'm impressed by the by the quality. So it's not paper, it's, I don't know how he's done it, it's sort of like resin on top. But it's quite thick, it's quite heavy. It almost looks like coal, like a bit cut out, bit cut out of coal. That's fantastic that is, look at that. For the time being, what I will do until my item turns up from the antiques place, what I'll do is, can you see it there? I'll put it on the fireplace because he, he did always like to keep warm. Look at that. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Stephen. That really means a lot, that does. But I've just had this to turn up. The postman looked at me quite strange this this morning. I don't know what this is. Can you guess what it is? Oh, it's a bucket. There you go. A bucket for the garden. Is there a name to it? Right, there's no name attached to this. So what I will do is I'll put a few feelers out on my social media and I'll find out who has sent it but thank you very much to whoever has sent the bucket that will be really handy when i come and do my bit of weeding and then we've got two more i was planning to do welsh cakes this afternoon i don't know if i'm in the mood for it you know sometimes you've really got to be in the mood to do welsh cakes and then once i've done the welsh cakes then it's on to the healthy the healthy diet has got to start you know I'm 50 in April and my plan to lose a bit of weight by the time I got to 50 hasn't been going very well what's that let's have a look Right, I can't find any pieces of paper to tell me who sent it. No, there's nothing on there. But it's a box of cleansing matcha green tea. Oh, okay, that's something I've never tried. And what is this? A double fitted sheet. Oh, it's very soft. The cats will adore this on the bed. Look at that. If 
fact, I might just put this on to keep a bit warm in the room down here. So thank you very much for that. But like I said, unfor unfortunately, there is no label to say who sent it. So if you sent that, own up in the comments below. <laughs> but thank you very much. And then finally, when the postman brought all this, he did look at me rather strangely. Ah, I know what this is. Oh, is it? Yes, I know what this is. I was watching Dragon's Den the other day. And, and there, was an, there was an invention on there. And it was called the Peggy Rain. <laughs> And I've got some mice. So who sent this? Uh, a gift from Sharon and Manny. So thank you very much to Shannon and Manny. We've got some mice for the cats with the cat nip on. And this, I saw this on Dragon's Den and I thought I'll have to get, I'll have to get one of these. But uh, thanks to, um, thanks to Sharon and Manny, They've sorted out the problem. It is a device that you put over your washing line. And apparently, when the rain comes, a guard flies over the washing line to protect it from the rain, which obviously you need something like this in the valleys because you can't be predictable that it's going to, that the sun is going to stay out. Just because it's come out in the morning doesn't mean it's going to stay. So we'll have a bit of fun setting this up if it ever rains. But yes, it's got like a sensor on it. And as soon as the rain comes down, this big sheet flies across your washing. So if you happen to be looking out of the, or if, or if the neighbors happen to be looking out of the window at the right time, they'll be thinking the house is possessed with uh, this sheet that just flies across the top. So let's get these mice out for the cats. Oh, they will absolutely love them. Look at that. So yes, thank you to everybody for sending your gifts through. They're very gratefully received. Oh, I feel exhausted now. So the Welsh cakes, I may make, I may make them today or I may make them tomorrow, is one of these recipes taken from this Welsh bake stone. So I've got one of these very old fashioned bake stone stones but I haven't used it yet um oh I, I don't know about sending the cats loopy I think the smell of this might send me off to sleep again <laughs> that is something I need to sort out my sleep is all over the place at the moment I'm just weirdly I'm finding it difficult to get up in the morning where usually I'm up with the lark so maybe when I get my diet on point that everything else will fall back into place Right, let's have a cup of tea and decide whether I'm going to do Welsh cakes or not. So here's an update on my seeds. But unfortunately, when you put the lights on, you have to have them, the four of them on. There's no way of just isolating them. But if we have a look, there you go. They've just popped up. And in fact, I can see there's a bit of mould growing, so I... Must well open the vents up, get, give them a bit of air. But they've come up, and it'll be a while yet before they get transplanted, because the weather in Wales is not playing ball at the moment. Apparently, sun sunshine, a bit like the song, the sun will come out tomorrow. But when is tomorrow? Now, at some point, I need to find time to come into this room and sort out the last of the boxes. There are still loads of boxes from London to sort out and there's a big box of clothes down there and what I'm thinking about doing is is just giving them away. I have a lot of these bags that come around the houses you know where I fill a bag up and put it outside so I think I might sort that and just get some new clothes because the ones that I've got are a bit too tight and there's the bookcase so yes, I need to 
decide what this room is going to be used for. I would like it to be a room without any technology in. So I'll just come in, put the light, go and read a book. Maybe put a desk. I picked this up from one of the local charity shops. It's a small uh, writing desk. I don't particularly like it because it's a modern design and I quite like the old-fashioned things. But I took it off their hands just to, to help them out a bit. But a table where I could sit down and do my craft work would be quite good. So I'm still undecided, but at some point I just need to come in here and spend a good few hours sorting everything out. It's also going to be the room that people will stay in. Rick Van Man is coming in a few weeks, so I need to sort it out by then. And then that's the little camp bed there. Ready if he wants to stay in the house or he can stay in his van. Because he has a van where he's where he has converted it. So all this will be completely different in about a week or two's time. I just found two pieces of art. This is of the local mountain, Blind Ronda, taken from the Dracos Mountain. This was done by a friend of mine called Derek Windsor, who is a, an artist. Currently, I think he's in South Africa, but that's very nice. And then this is one that I did myself. There it is. I wonder if you can see what that is. It is a woman looking over her shoulder with a hat on. She's got the hat on there. That's the nose looking over the shoulder. So who knows, I might get back into my art. Maybe I could open up an online shop on my blog and sell bits of art. Who knows? It's been a busy day for pause today. Something else has just turned up, but I know what that is. I actually bought that about two or three weeks ago. Ah, there's a magpie just climbing up. Let's see if we can catch it. Come on, let's go in the spare room. Where is it then? Oh, it's just on the roof, I think. There it is. Oh, there's two. One for sorrow, two for joy. Well, it's a joy to see them, I'll say. Even though they are magpies. As long as they don't start to screech. But I haven't seen anything on this, this small one. Although... I do remember somebody saying, wait for the big birds to come, and then the small birds will follow. There they are. Where's he cute? He going? He's gonna look at my tulips, I think. So, just before we were interrupted, I was about to tell you something about my window. There you go, they'll soon fly off now when they see me. This is the window out onto the garden. But I thought, wouldn't it be nice to wake up in the morning and see the sun streaming through a stained glass window? So I've bought this. <laughs> now I don't know if it's going to work. I'm not going to put it up today, but I'm just put it up to show you. But it doesn't fit, unfortunately. So what I've done is I've bought some black masking tape to go around the sides. But the problem is, because for the, for the past few weeks, what, what I've done is, just to see if I absolutely want to do this, although it does come off the window, is I've just tucked it in to the top of the window and closed it. It's quite difficult to do, but there it is. So I've put it up there just to see whether I like it and try and work out where the centre is. But the problem is, even though it looks quite nice, I miss looking out oh, onto the garden. So what I thought I may do is, I may cut this out with the standing knife. So I, at least I can still come to the window and have a quick look at the garden. Now I think there is a fill, there's a, like a very thin protective layer. So I'm hoping, anyway, when you pull the layer off, the colors become a lot brighter. I don't know. I don't know anybody that's ever bought one of these. So if you have, tell me what you think of them below. But for the time being, and it's a bit too long as well, so it needs to be cut. So 
when I'm in the mood, I will do it. Next fine day now, I'll be out there and get that top bed sorted. Right, let's deal with this box that I've got. Now this box room is exactly that. It is a box. It is really tiny. And there's a radiator here, which I haven't been able to switch off. But I was talking to an engineer friend of mine a couple of weeks ago now, this was, and he said, one radiator in the house must always be left open. You can't have all your radiators closed down. So it's in this room, which was originally going to be my sort of office, but it has turned into a sort of laundry room. Because I thought if it's going to stay on, the slightest bit of heat that I put on, if this room is going to get warm, then at least I can put the clothes in here and they can dry. So I can use that heat. And what I also do then is I slightly open the window a bit. Not enough that the cats can get out, but just enough for air to circulate around in the room. So I've bought another, what you call it, rail to put my clothes on. And I'm thinking I'll put that where I'm stood now. So I'll have a sort of a system of put them there to dry. Obviously I'll put them outside if the weather is good. But they can go there to dry and then once they've finished drying they can then go on to the clothes hanger. That's that's what I was trying to think of. So just when I thought the house was finished there's always something to be done isn't there? And I remember when I put the comments on the other, the other, the other week now, because time is flying. We're coming up to April. It'll be Christmas before we can sneeze. Yeah, somebody said they've lived in their house for, for 15 years and they're still trying to get it sorted. Now, what are the instructions then? All right, there's feet to go on here as well. Okay, it seems quite easy. Shall I attempt to do it without looking at the instructions? <laughs> it feels like this is all I did when I moved in was just do building things. Me and my friend Alan Key, we developed quite quite the relationship. I saw this on an Instagram page. There's a guy that I follow from Cornwall. And on one of his videos, I saw this in the background. So I sent him an email. And I thought, I'll buy one of them as well. They look quite attractive. When I was down the antique store, the other the other day, somebody asked me, what style are you going for in the house? And I said, I haven't got a clue. I'm just picking things that I like. And if a style comes out of it, then so, so much the better. I think sort of retro miners look. My back is still a bit sore from that fall. I must say. That's the next thing I need to sort out, is mountain boots. Mountain climbing boots. You get these weeks where you think, oh, I haven't even got time to fart. Oh, if anybody was in, in any doubt, the song that I asked about in the last video, when I said, can you name the TV show? It was Mr. Ben. But I think, I wonder how many people would know 
what this show is. It's actually quite big now that I've got it up. And then on top, so I'll rearrange the room a lot better after I finish filming. Let me pop that in there. And there we go. So it's just a single one. You could have bought them where there was a smaller one. But I thought Han got that many claws. There you go. Sort of a vintage retro feel to that as well. Right. Let's go downstairs and have something to drink. I've started to develop a bit of a routine when I go to bed. I come here, I tap my barometer, and I think it's broke. It's been stuck on rain for weeks. I bought a plastic board the other day because a lot of you were saying that I should have another board to put my chicken on. But I had a very interesting comment the other day. Sometimes it's really frustrating. YouTube doesn't show you the name of the person that leaves the comment. It just leaves the username, which is usually a load of letters. But she said that she did a uh, test or an exam in university where they tried them all out and they found that glass was better but that it that it damaged the knives and that she suggested that I should stick with a wooden board for doing my cutting up of my poultry and my meat rather because they found in their tests that by doing that over and over and over again you get bits of plastic that end up in your food, which isn't a nice thing. So what I may do is I may get another one of these and just maybe paint on the edge, you know, to say meat only. So thank you very much for that nugget of information. I was going to try and get her onto the show, but I don't think she wants to uh, come on. Right, I need to pack this away because I was doing my... Uh, chocolates this morning. I tried to remember what did I do last time when I lost the weight. So I've gone back to my healthy breakfast but when I had a fitness instructor he said to put a bit of chocolate onto your breakfast. So that's what I did this this morning and I thoroughly enjoyed it. But not any old chocolate. Chocolate that's at least over 70%. So I managed to find one that was 85% and I certainly feel a lot more energetic throughout the day. Also I had a correspondence apparently this box this first aid box that I bought for eight pounds no was it four pound this was apparently these are on eBay going for about 55 pound so I've got a bargain there When is the um, spring equinox? Let me have a look now. That's coming up on the 20th, so that's next Wednesday. So we should, at some point, be changing the clocks. Is it on the last, sun the last Saturday, Sunday of the month? I can't remember. Let's have a sneak peek at April. There it is. Oh, my birthday is on a Tuesday. That's interesting, because I think it was a Tuesday that I was born. Right, I am not going to do Welsh cakes today, or at least not in this video. I think I might just do a video by themselves of me doing Welsh cakes, because I will be doing them on the traditional bake stone, which is this, when you put that onto the cooker and you heat it up. But I even went out the other day and bought the, the what you call them, the cutting knives to make pro proper holes. But now the big discussion is, which hole do you have? Do you have a big one, 
small one. But I think I might just go for the one in the middle. But we'll sort all that out when the time comes. I'm feeling a bit exhausted today, to be honest. So I'm going to make myself just a usual bit of dinner and I'll catch up with you next time. I've had lots of questions for the question and answer video, so I may do that this weekend or I may leave that till next week because apparently we're going to have another week of rain. <laughs> Welcome to Wales. Anyway, I'll catch up with you next time. So for me until then, bye for now.